Our FBI captains, number one, Reggie Colas, number four, is Dan Kornkowski, number 21, Nick Schlatz, number 46, Connor Young, and number 73, Jay Spanish. Good evening, football fans. We're broadcasting live from the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York for the 2014 edition of the Transit Trophy game as the RPI engineers will be hosting the WPI engineers. My name is Kurt Sutt. I'm here with Bob Conway. We're going to bring you all the action live today on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. And before we get started with today's game, let's run down the interview that my colleague Bob Conway had with RPI engineer head coach Ralph Izernia before today's action. Big win last week. Team played hard on both sides of the ball. What'd you think? I thought it was a good win going on the road. Um, showed our maturity. Uh, we uh, we drove up the day of the game, so it was uh, it was an early start for our guys. Uh, but like I said, uh, I think they were mature with the with the trip. Uh, got on the field and uh, and really handled their business. I think you what you saw last week is you saw all three phases. Uh, again, just like in the, in the Norwich game, uh, really contributing to the team win. Uh, offensively, taking uh, taking advantage of, uh, of, of some mismatches, and uh, you know, defensively, uh, we bottled up their running game, forced their quarterback into some uh, uh, into some hurried passes, and um, you know, obviously with the kicking game, we were able to play some field position and. Uh, and put up some points. So overall, it was a good team win. Um, we uh, we would have liked to have gotten uh, a few more guys in the game uh, towards the uh, towards the end. Uh, so one of the things that, that we had talked about is when we're in that situation is to try to try to finish strong uh, and, uh, and and have no let up and, and keep our concentration. So uh, that's what championship football teams do is that they they they're able to close those games out and and really uh, really empty the bench. Well, once again, you I thought you went pretty deep to every position on the field. Uh, I mean, using people early and late. Well, that's, you know, I, again, I, I know that we've talked about that before, but we have a number of guys that can contribute, especially at the skill positions uh, on offense and defense. So uh, in an effort to keep guys fresh throughout the course of the year, we want to make sure that we play those guys, uh, especially some guys who have, who have not gotten, um, you know, may, they might be freshmen or might be uh, second-year sophomores, hadn't gotten a lot of playing experience. But to get those guys on the field, get them in the uh, – uh, get them some some run during the during the game so they they get used to the speed the contact uh, of, of college football tell us about uh, WPI and uh, maybe after that the, the league in general well WPI is uh, is is coming off of a, of a tight loss to, uh, to to Norwich it was a game that that could have gone either way it was uh, there, there were a couple of uh, mistakes from both sides that uh, could have swung the uh, game in, in either one's favor. Um, WPI is a is a physical football team. Uh, defensively, I know at the beginning of the year they were returning ten starters on the defensive side. Um, they have uh, had to play through some injuries. Um, they uh, they run a uh, they run a spread style offense. Uh, and they, they run a lot of different plays. There's a lot of different looks. Our guys need to, to, to make sure that they key their reads 
uh, on defense and uh, don't get um, you know don't get sucked into any misdirection. How about the league overall? What do you think will be strong? Uh, I, I, what do you I think, think won't be strong? Well, no, I, <laughs> no I, I think one of the things that you know this was the, the last year was the first year that I was in the league, so um, kind of getting my feet wet. I thought that there there was a lot of parity in the league. Uh, after you, after you talk about, after you talk about Hobart, Hobart obviously is the class of the league, and and they're the ones, uh, you know, they're they're the the man on the mountain right now, and, and everyone's got to try to knock them them off, and then until someone does, then you know they're going to be the ones that uh, everyone shoots for. Uh, but I think everyone else in the league. Uh, is pretty similar, and it goes, uh, you know, much like last year, where uh, a mistake here or there can can cost you the football game. And on the other side, if you're able to make your own breaks, then uh, then it's going to swing the game in, in your favor. So I, I think there's you go up and down the league, Springfield and and um, and Union and and Rochester and St. Lawrence and Merch Marine. I mean. Um, you know, you go all the way up and down, and uh, you know there's not an easy game on the schedule. Uh, finally, this weekend, mm -hmm. it's kind of special for you. Well, uh, the uh, the Saturday night game. This was, I, I believe, this is the third night game that they've had at uh, Ecav Stadium, uh, and uh, we wanted to make it a special game. Obviously, it's a transit trophy game uh, between uh, RPI and WPI, uh, and that is a uh, that, that's a big deal for for us. And uh, we want to win back the trophy, put it back in our trophy case, and uh, that's something that you, you've heard the uh, uh, the seniors, especially, saying that all throughout the course of this week. So, um, so that's a big deal for us. The second thing is that we're going to be wearing tribute jerseys this week, uh, black jerseys. And I know the uh, the last game that they played on 86 Field uh, with Joe King, uh, they um, they wore black jerseys. So that's something that we want to do every single year is bring back bring back that tribute jersey as a tribute to the uh, to, to the guys who have come before um, and uh, you know and, and really uh, more than anything else pay thanks to them for uh, for everything they've done for our football program that's a great idea they'll really appreciate it too we wish you best of luck coach well I thank you very much and we're back live with you once more here from the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, where soon it will be RPI versus WPI in the Transit Trophy game for 2014. They just had the coin toss at the 50-yard line. RPI won. They defer to the second half, so WPI will get the ball to start out today's game. And right now I think the color guard is making its way out onto the field, and we're going to have the national anthem shortly. Uh, just so you know, Liberty League football was already in action earlier today. Union took their third loss of the season, losing to St. Lawrence 28-20. Hobart won big over Merchant Marine, and Springfield won big over Rochester. So those were the three games that occurred earlier today. So it's Hobart, Springfield, and St. Lawrence winless in the league. RPI and WPI playing here to find out who's going to be the fourth or only wins in the league. I said winless. They are undefeated in the league. RPI and WPI are playing here to determine who else will be undefeated at the end of today's game. Playing under the lights, only night game for RPI today as it's almost dark here. Sun setting prior to 7 o'clock, it looks like. Now the colors are being presented by the joint... And very shortly, we will have the national anthem here at East Campus Stadium. Who thrives with the singing of the national anthem by cadets and midshipmen from Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC?
time to remind you, you are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium here in Troy, New York. Coach up Bob Conway on the call for you tonight. Before we get started with today's action, we would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute. And that includes WRPI's coverage of Engineer Football, Hockey, and Baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. And you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as we're sending something over the ether of the air. We'll provide it for you on that feed. Once again, that is WRPI.org. It's the RPI engineers versus the WPI engineers. We will try to avoid using the word engineers in today's game. If we do, we're probably referring to RPI. Just so you know that. It'll be RPI going left to right, WPI right to left across your radio dial in this first quarter for the Transit Trophy game and the, well, the opener for the conference schedule, Bob. Yes, it is the first game for both teams. Long series, November 3rd, 1894 was the first. RPI has 56 wins, WPI 46, and there were five ties. In terms of the Transit Trophy, uh, RPI leads that 22 to 11 with one tie. Andrew Franks getting ready to kick off from the 35-yard line. Again, RPI left to right, WPI right to left across your dial in this first quarter. Back deep looking to get the ball is Murphy. He takes it in the end zone and he'll take a knee. That's pretty typical. WPI takes the ball, start out today's game at their own 25. I think he had four or five out of seven last week. Touchbacks. Average 40 yards on the, the punts, kick two field goals. Engineer, or pardon me, WPI, already I'm making a mistake. WPI coming out on offense. Their quarterback is Dan Eckler. Tailback is Trey Pierce. The running back is Sherman Peoples. The wide receivers are Anthony Andre, Brandon Ecker. The tight end is Nick Scrivenich. First and 10 from the 25 for WPI. This is a handoff on first down. Gets him three, four. Well, you know, not a bad run. That's about five yards, or pardon me, four yards on the run for WPI to start out today's game. Brandon Cook, first guy there for the engineers. A couple of guys helping him. He was the first guy there. Nice night for football. That was number 34 for WPI, and your task is trying to find a WPI roster and figure out who 34 is. <laughs> Kevin Lynch, who I have listed on defense. That's who it is. Gain of four for Lynch on First down, second and six for WPI from their own 29-yard line. Another handoff. This should be, well, it's close to a first down for WPI. I thought he had it. I thought Lynch, no, nope, that's not Lynch. That's Pierce. Pierce on the carry, and it's actually a first down. They'll say his forward progress got him across the 35, just barely, between the 35 and the 36, and it's a first down for WPI. No score here, 14.05 to go in the first quarter. Totally dark in Troy, so we're under the lights for tonight's night game. So Pierce and Sherman are the running backs, right? I have Lynch as a running back. I'm looking at it too deep here. So. Yeah, but 34 ran the ball on first down. That's right. Throw on first down for WPI. Looking towards the sidelines, and that's incomplete flag on the play, though. And it looks like RPI is going to get flagged on this one. Igo was the intended receiver. That is Joe Igo. Looks like he was the intended receiver along the sidelines, and I think RPI is getting called for pass interference. That was a nice throw by uh, Eckler. Igo is one of his uh, primary receivers. Yep, pass interference against RPI. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Not like the pros where you get it at the spot of the infraction. It's the only spot of the infraction if it's less than 15. So the ball will go into RPI territory to about the 49 of RPI in the pass interference call. No score here. 13.45 to go in the first quarter. WPI, first possession of the game. Got a first down rushing and now a first down via penalty. Counts either way. WPI in their road white jerseys with silver and some sort of red pants. I'm not sure the official color. Throw on first down, and it's intercepted by the engineer. Headed back in the other direction for RPI is Lanieri, and Lanieri is out of bounds. Nice pick by Lanieri. He's out of 27. He almost broke that, folks. He read it very well. 
jumped in front of the intended receiver and took it to about 27 yard line. Yeah, he got a favorable spot on that too. He did. RPI takes over at the WPI 29 with 13.37 to go here in the first quarter. Sean Avery brings his team out. He's the starting quarterback for RPI. Engineers were single wide off each side, men in the slot each side, and Avery keeps it. Now the pitch. Colas has it, 25, 20. Colas along the sideline, 15, pushed out at the 12. Stepped out to 12. It'll be an RPI first down. Nice fake by, uh, by Avery, who, by the way, last week was the offense performer of the week in the Liberty League. And Franks was the special team performer in the Liberty League for the second time. Avery was 17 for 27. One interception, 297 yards, and two TDs. First and 10 RPI at the WPI 12-yard line. No score first quarter. Avery out of the shotgun. Too wide on the right side. The give is to Colas, and he's tripped up. I think he got two. I think they're going to put him at the 10 for a gain of two. Nope, that's not Colas. That is Lane. RPI had four running backs over 40 yards last year last week with uh, one of them who was a freshman uh, Mike Tavinis got in late in the game had six carries for 84 yards and a touchdown first time he's been in the game second and nine they'll say he was stopped at the 11 lane was on first down and RPI now has Schultz in the backfield the carry goes straight ahead. There's a huge pile, and about 15 people were pushing in all different kinds of directions. Stopped at the seven, so it's a good gain for RPI. Picks up about five, and it'll be third and approximately four. Number 67, Jack Downey in on the tackle. Well, one of the people in on the tackle for WPI. Excuse my voice tonight, folks. Is it me, or are these numbers worse to see than the ones last week? They're worse. They're worse. I can't read them. I mean, I can see them. I don't have bad eyesight. I just can't read them. It is difficult in motion to see these numbers. Avery on the option on third down. Pitches to Colas, going left. Colas turns the corner, inside the five, and pushed down at the two. Lost the ball. The ball got lost. WPI recovers right around the two-yard line. Golis lost it, it was going towards the sidelines and somebody from WPI grabbed it before he or the ball went out of bounds and WPI has it at their own two. Well, this is, this is similar to uh, a couple of weeks ago. RPI had a, a score down by a, a two or three yard line. Same thing happened, the turnover. The offense moved the ball very well in that series. But there were three guys uh, knocking at that ball that Reggie uh, couldn't hang on to. The rest of WPI's offense, the line up front, Corey Sterling, Will Pope, Zach Arnold, Sean Popeski, or Popieski, and Patrick Rosica. That would be the rest of the WPI starting offense. First and 10, WPI at their own two. Throw that's incomplete, looking for a receiver around the eight. McGillicuddy, the intended man there. And it's going to be tough tonight, folks, to, to give you a lot of numbers on the five, far side of the field. On the near side, they're not bad. We can make out what they are, but the far side, it's either the glare or the lighting or something. Well, RPI's uniforms don't lend themselves to quickly picking out a number. WPI's uniforms are better. That's red numbers on white. Second and 10. No score here, first quarter. WPI, second possession of the game. It's the quarterback draw, and Ecker, Eckler, pardon me, takes it ahead, picks up a couple. Uh, maybe one, not a couple, just one. He's to the three. It'll be third down and about nine for WPI. Kobe Tragney in on that tackle. I mentioned the uh, earlier, uh, the captains, Reggie Colas, a running back, is, a, is one of the captains, and um, the other captain is uh, Nick Burkowski. He's a defensive back in an all-league first team last year. 
Third down and nine. Four wideouts for WPI. Eckler drops back in the end zone, puts it up along the sidelines, and it's too far over the head of Boynton, the intended receiver. And he had no chance to get to that one. He was into the RPI sideline, and WPI sends out the punt team to punt from their own end zone. Nice, nice rush by Chris Onsman and two of the other RPI linemen. Uh, there are a couple of assistant captains, and they are Kobe Tragney, the middle linebacker, and Jay Ishkanich. He's an offensive lineman. Cavernelli looking to punt, gets it away from the end zone. Gadar has to go back for this. He takes a WPI bounce. Gadar grabs it in his own 35, turns around. He's to the 40, escapes one man, still on his feet, and now he goes down at the RPI 44. 10.28 to go here. First quarter, no score, RPI versus WPI. Pretty good field position for RPI. Uh, we want to remind you you're listening to Rensselaer football on 91.5 WRPI Troy. Next week, engineers travel to the Merchant Marine Academy. And following week, back at home, St. Lawrence for homecoming weekend. The 1,000th game in Rensselaer football history. Engineers on offense for their second time today, starting at their own 44 in a scoreless game. Avery throws, and it's incomplete, looking for Lane right across the 50-yard line. RPI's offense, sorry, Bob, that's all right. going to get the offense in. Jeff Avery, the quarterback, Austin Emery, and Nick Schlatz are listed as the starting running backs. Wide receivers are Je Reggie Collis, Logan Goddard. Tight end is Kyle Hash. The line up front, Ken Berryhill, Jay Yaskinich, Steve Mills, Seth Stauble, and Scott Davis. Yeah, Lane, he just missed that pass. It was, wasn't his fault. It was thrown just a little off, but... Uh, it was a nice setup because there was hardly anybody around him. Second and 10 at the 44. RPI, Avery, fakes the handoff. He keeps it himself on the option and he gets to the 49 for a gain of five. Yeah, number 35, Brian Murtaugh on the tackle for WPI. That was the option, and uh, Reggie was out there at, at, like he has been for three other carries tonight on a pitch. But Avery kept at that time, picked up, you know, three or four yards. Third and five for RPI at their own 49. Two wideouts, two men in the slot, one man in the backfield behind Avery, who's in the shotgun. Now they'll put a man in motion. That's Lane. Avery looks to throw after faking the handoff, runs with it, and he stopped at the WPI 49. Smart move by Avery. The receivers were all covered well. He looked around, put, put the ball under his arm, and uh, went to work running. Franks comes out. He's the place kicker and the punter for RPI. I said Franks averaged about 40 yards a punt last week. And 64 yards. Whoa, has trouble with the snap. Gets the ball. Nope, blocked. He does kick it. It's blocked. It's bouncing around. And finally, the ball goes out of bounds at the RPI 32. There is a flag on the play. This could be an illegal kick. I saw the ball get kicked by somebody at some point. So there could be an illegal kick here. But Franks had trouble as the ball came to him. It looked like it was good when it came to him. But he had trouble handling the ball. He finally got a kickoff. It got blocked. And WPI it looks like they'll get the ball on RPI side of the field. Well, they've had good field position already tonight once. RPI, if you just turned it, tuned in, uh, got all the way down to the about the one to two yard line and uh, they fumbled uh, before going into the end zone or actually going out of bounds. And uh, they've moved the ball very well tonight, but nothing on the board yet. So 8.57 to go here in the first quarter. No score, WPI gets the ball at the RPI 32 after the blocked punt. The penalty was against RPI. I think it was a substitution infraction. I wasn't able to hear clearly when the referee announced it and it was declined, the penalty was declined. So WPI at the 32. They're gonna try to run off the right side and not much there for Igo. Yeah, he runs out of bounds after one. Joe Igo, number 81. 
He's a sophomore, 5'9", 180 pounds, and he's one of the people they like to go to. You know, looking at RPI's three wins this year, they gave up nine points at Norwich and 13 at Castleton and got beat 34-31 at Alfred. They're playing Alfred at Alfred. Gain of one, second and nine for WPI. One man goes in motion, Eckler fakes the handoff. He goes straight ahead. He's gonna get pretty good, well, not as much as I thought he was going to get. Not as good a push by the offensive line as I thought. Gets to the 28, so a gain of three. That will make it third and about six for WPI. Yeah, no, uh, Mark Grimes in on the tackle for the, in, not for the engineers, for the RPI engineers. <laughs> it's the engineers versus the engineers here in Troy. RPI defense, Anthony Pillar, Connor McCrum, Chris Ownsman, and Andrew, Andre Lucier up front. Well, actually, no, Pillar's a linebacker. That's the way they have it listed. Linebackers are Pillar and Brad Gahagan, along with Colby Tragney and Brandon Cook. Third down and six for WPI. Eckler drops back. Now he runs straight ahead. Looks like it was a design draw, and he gets nothing, maybe even lost half a yard. Couple of engineers in on that play. Looking for a number here. I think it was Kobe Tragney, number 56, and number 58, Chris Hansman. Both in on that tackle. Cornerbacks for RPI, Phil Lanieri and Ryan Buss, and the safeties are Connor Young and Nick Borkowski. Fourth down and six for WPI. The scoreboard's wrong. Ball is not on the two. It's on the 28. They'll go for it on fourth down. Throw, class, complete to the 15-yard line. Nice throw and nice catch by Boynton. Bus was all over him, but the ball was too well thrown. Running a slant pattern towards the middle of the field. Just got enough away from Bus to get free. Catches the ball, and WPI has it first and 10 at the RPI 15. 6.35 to go here, first quarter. No score. Eckler out of the shotgun, two wide outs left, one right. This is gonna be a handoff. No room to maneuver, no place to go for Pierce. And he stopped at the line of scrimmage. I think Greg A. Bear held him up. He got away from him. And eventually he was he was tackled by Borkowski. Nick Borkowski number four. Borkowski from Fort Zalanga, New York. Three wideouts. They'll move a man in the slot to the left. Will WPI. Second and 10 at the 15. Eckler out of the shotgun. Hands off. Whoops, it's a reverse. It was, looked like it was going to be a halfback option. Blanchard got the ball and he's tackled back at the 21 for a loss of six. Oh, that was a host. That was a host of guys there, but I think the first guy there, Anthony Pilla. He was joined by two or three other engineers and they read that all the way. Blanchard has to make his way, hop his way off the field. It looks like he hurt his right leg. Now he's getting some assistance from some of his teammates to make his way off the field. He got the ball from the wide out position, moved, well tried to move towards the mid on. It looked like he was moving his arm up to throw the ball, possibly to find Eckler on the other side, but then he got tackled and obviously hurt. Five to go here, first quarter, no score. Third down and 16 for WPI. Eckler out of the shotgun with four wideouts. Drops back. Only a three-man rush. Looking end zone. Overthrows everybody, and it's incomplete. Good coverage by the engineers. Good rush by the off uh, defensive line. Engineers, have, other than a, a pass play, they played pretty well on defense so far tonight. It, you know, with their backs against the wall and, and field position-wise, at least twice. WPI keeps the offense out there. This is the scrimmaging from the 21. It would be a 38-yard field goal attempt. If this is RPI, they'd probably be kicking, but WPI doesn't have the same type of kicking game. So they'll put a four wide out formation out there, three to the right for Eckler. He's out of the shotgun. Looks to throw over the middle and incomplete. That had no chance of finding the receiver. The intended receiver was Green. He was never going to get that. It wasn't because he never turned around. And he had to defend it between him and the ball. That's it. <laughs> Even if he had turned around, the ball wasn't getting to him. He got knocked away by the RPI defender. Exactly. There was two defenders there. 
and he, he has back to the quarterback. So engineers, a nice job on defense once again. The defense has played very good football all year. The Alpha game was two very good teams. We gave up 34 points. We scored 31, but it was, it was a very good game by two good teams. 448 to go first quarter. RPI first and 10 at their own 21. No score. Avery fakes the handoff, looking downfield, doesn't find anybody. Flag comes out as Avery goes down at the 15. By the length of that play, you need to think that it's a holding call. As WPI had defenders all over the place, it is holding. I would think so, yes. I like the fact that, that Avery has uh, doesn't just throw it up there. He, he's, he's come a long way since last year, last week. Uh, and I really, I really apologize because he should have been a game star as well as the other two that I had. Uh, he played very well, completed a number of passes, two TDs, and uh, scored another one himself. And just did an overall very good job. Second down for RPI and 14. Loss of four on that play. They're back to the 17-yard line. Avery, handoff. This goes straight up the middle, 21, 22, maybe the 23. Maybe the 23. That's Drummond. Shane Drummond, yes. Shane Drummond on, on the run. He was tackled by number 58. It's hard to, they get people in the game. I don't have a roster for them. All I have is a two deep. I don't have 58 on my cheat sheet. Yeah. He's not on my too deep either. Literature has failed us again. Third down and nine RPI. Avery keeps it himself, has some room. 25, 30, 35, 40, 35. Avery to the 49. First down RPI. Nice job by Avery. Finally tackled by number 37 for uh, WPI. That's Eric Lacroix. La He's a junior, 6'2", 170 pounds. L-A-C-R-O-I-X. LaCroix? I think, I think that's probably right. I think right. it's LaCroix. No score, 325 to go. First quarter, RPI at their own 42, first and 10. Avery on the option, pitches to Lane. Lane starts heading up field. Lane stopped at the 45 for a plus three. He got hit early about the line of scrimmage and still got three yards out of it. Engineers continue to run, you know, the contingency backfield at least five or six on a regular basis, sometimes seven or eight. Coach said in the interview he likes to keep fresh bodies in the game at all positions if he can. Second down and seven for RPI. Avery throws. Cole is at the 50, 45, first down, 40, 35. Cole is pushed out at the 30 of WPI. Number 24 finally not pulled out of bounds. That was Jason Lamb. RPI moving the ball. They've got it first and 10, WPI 30. No score here in the first quarter. WPI's defense, Ryan Matthew, Jack Downey, and Nate Martell are the line up front. The linebackers are Jason Beauregard, Brian Murtaugh, Robin, pardon me, Robert Hansa Maurice, and Jason Lamb. First and 10, RPI at the 30. Avery, option, keeps it himself, cuts inside, kind of stutter stepped on that, and that cost him. He only gets about one to the 29. Yeah, number, number 37, once again, uh, for WPI in on the tackle. That's Eric. Say it again. LaCroix. LaCroix. It's French. I know what it is. Cornerbacks are Sean Murphy and Jonathan are known for WPI, and the safeties are Kevin Lynch and Eric LaCroix. I left my French class in high school knowing how to say the Hal Mary. That was it. That was useful, Bob. <laughs> Second down and nine, RPI, Avery on play action, throws end zone, it's incomplete, overthrows Gadar, who was in single coverage, but no way he could get to the ball. That has been one of the, one of the problems, even though it's much better, 
Avery's improved so much in this past year. He's become a real leader on the team as well. Uh, but there was a tendency last year to overthrow a lot. This year it's not a lot, but it's still there sometimes. Third down and nine for RPI for WPI 29. No score in the first quarter. Avery looks to throw under pressure and goes down. Goes down at the 34. He got hit and as he was trying to avoid it, looks like he kind of lost his balance more than anything else and goes down to the ground and you're down in college at that point. It was hit by a guy named Robert Harasimowitz. You know what? I don't even know if he hit him. I looked at the replay. He may have just avoided that but lost his balance. It uh, could down, be. Which is as good as hitting. I thought he might have rushed him, but maybe not. 51-yard field goal attempt now by Andrew Franks. They're going to spot the ball. Well, we spotted the 41, 51-yard attempt from near the right hash. RPI looking to put the first points on the board today. The snap, the spot's down, the kick is up, and I'm going to wait. The kick is good! 3-0 RPI lead. What a weapon. Unbelievable. When you've got a guy like Andrew Franks on your team, what an advantage that is. 51 yards. And he's, he's probably kicked by now close to half a dozen over 50. Once again, the uh, engineers get stalled. They, have, they make some good plays, uh, but they get stalled on putting the ball in the end zone, which is uh, not good but they've moved the ball well, and, and the defense has played very well. So it's, it's really allowed the engineers to uh, work, work a little harder on bringing this offense into the end zone. They're down there knocking all the time, but they, they gotta get it in there. Franks to boot the ball away. Kicks it downfield. Deep in the end zone, WPI is not taking this out. We'll take the ball to 25 yard line. WPI comes in one and two on the season under head coach Chris Robertson. Frank, uh, I was saying earlier, I think he was four for for six last week. Kickoffs, uh, and, and he averaged 64 yards a kick on kickoffs and 40 on punts. WPI with that one and two record, a win over Curry, and then losses to Worcester State, the Battle of Worcester, and Norwich. Last week they lost to Norwich, 10 to seven. RPI up three nothing here at the 25. Eckler keeps it himself after he takes the handoff, and that play has nothing going right for WPI. He loses one, he tries to run to the right and go outside. Ryan Buss read that very well. He was joined by a couple of un other engineers, but he was the first one there. Buss is the local product, I think, from Shenandoah High School, sophomore 61205. Shenandoah continued their dominance so far this year with a win over Saratoga last night. Ball to 24, second and 11 for WPI. Eckler hands off this time. A few couple of yards. A couple of yards for Pierce is pushed back by the RPI team in what will be the last play of the first quarter. He gains three. First 15 minutes are gone in here in the East Campus Stadium for the 2014 Transit Trophy game, and RPI leads WPI 3-0. That was uh, Alex Greenwich who came in the game at the backer, and he stood him right up. Pretty uh, entertaining first quarter, do right? you think? It's been pretty good, got some turnovers. Nobody has given up the ball the same way twice. WPI has lost on the interception, gave away a punt, then lost it on downs. WP, or RPI, pardon me, fumbled, had a punt blocked, and now a field goal. Unfortunately, the fumble was on the two yard line or one yard line. That's the way it goes. That's right. But it's a good ball game. Getting ready for the second 
period here, and uh, we want to remind you you're listening to Rensselaer Football. 91.5 WRPI Troy, Kirk Stutton, Bob Conway on call. It'll be WPI third and eight at the 27. I gotta think the second number on the scoreboard for the ball on doesn't work because it's saying two and one. Yeah, right. It doesn't work. 15 minutes on the clock, three nothing. RPI leads in the first half. Eckler out of the shotgun with four wideouts on third and eight. Drops back, four man rush, puts it up, caught. That's a first down to the 40. Caught by Igo at the 40 yard line, and it'll be a first down, WPI. Yeah, he was uh, Philip Lanieri on the tackle. <laughs> Taking a look at the stats from the first half total offensive. WPI 25 yards, RPI 79. I'll pick that up when this plays over. First and 10, WPI at the 40, trailing 3 0 to RPI in the transit trophy game. Eckler has a man going motion to the left. Now puts the ball up in the air, looking sideline and caught down into RPI territory. Stopped at the 23 as he dove and grabbed it. Igo has it at the RPI 23 for another WPI first down. Bus covered him very well, but Igo just ended up with the ball. I goes a good one. They go to him a lot. WPI moving the ball. You know, something about this game, regardless of how WPI is coming into this game, something about this game gets them up. Every year. Every year, <laughs> regardless of where they are. 14 to go, first half, 3 0 RPI. Handoff, got nothing. Absolutely nothing for Pierce. Like Greenwich got it. Is that 44? It's 44 tonight. It was Greenwich or Pillar. That's Greenwich. If, if it's 44, it's Greenwich. He nailed them for a big loss. Back to the 28. A loss of about five. Second and 15 for WPI. Eckler throws. This is a short pass in the flat. It only get him about four yards. It's going to the a lot of good coverage by the engineers. Bus was there. Number 27, uh, Brandon Cook was there. Couldn't see that third third number, but uh, Bus and Cook. Not much of a gain for a pass. They had a couple of yards. They had lost yeah. four, and they got about three of that back. Four or five. Third down and 12, they'll call it. Eckler throws, and that was a badly thrown ball. He was leading Green going to the sideline, but he let him too far. Green never had a chance. And uh, you can give some credit uh, on that play to Pilla. He, he made himself known to the quarterback very quickly. WPI keeps the offense out there. I mentioned in the first quarter, kicking game is not their strong suit, so you have to think once WPI gets inside the 30, it's four down territory. Eckler puts two wide to the left, one to the right, fourth and 11, or fourth and 12 from the 29. Eckler looking right, end zone, up in the air, tipped away, it was off the defender's hands, that was bust. Tipped away, RPI gets it at the 24. If Buss had caught it, it would have been at the 25, so it's a difference of a yard. Yeah, nice play by Buss, good coverage. Even on the one that uh, Big Love caught, caught, Buss had him covered very well. He just made a great catch. And Kurt, uh, the engineer defense has really come to play so far tonight. They have had WPI in their territory fairly deep three times and didn't give up a point. Three nothing is the score. RPI on top, 12.40 to go in the first half. Ball at the 25 for RPI. 
I actually thought they scrimmaged at the 24 to WPI. Handoff on first down, going off to the left, and then cutting back upfield. Gets out to about the 31. That is to Venice, who came in at the end of last week's game and had some good production. I, I wondered when he was going to he, he ran six plays last, last week for 84 yards and a touchdown. And he was about the eighth back into the game. Freshman, very young team. Second down, and Tavinis takes the carry again, goes backwards, he's almost being pushed backwards, and gets to the 33. He, he kept it going, though. Yeah, he Barker, kept those legs churning. Barker got him, turned around, and he kept going backwards, and Barker finally pushed him backwards, but that was actually forwards at that point. Third down and one, as the ball is spotted at the 34. Now Barker, Barker had him almost as when he got the ball. Yes, right away. Two wideouts on the right for RPI. Man in the slot on the left. One man in the backfield. Avery gives it to Venice. To whoops, no. Nope, Avery kept it himself. He's got the first down. He's to the 39. Nice fake. Very nice fake by Avery. Uh, number four, Pat Finn on the tackle for. WPI. First and 10 RPI at their own 39. Three nothing they lead, 11.15 to go here in the first half. I just get a feeling Gadar is gonna break one or Hogan. <laughs> Call us in motion. Nope, handoff, is that to finish again? And he, yep, that's to finish, and he gets to the 48. First touchdown at the 48, a yard short of the first down. Yeah. And there's a flag. Illegal shift against RPI, so it doesn't count. Jason Lamb was in on that tackle. That's too bad because the nemesis really, when they give him a chance, he, he takes advantage of it. Take a look, look at his size. Five yards for the illegal shift. Backs RPI up to the 34. He's short, but he's 200 pounds. 5'8", 200 pounds. Freshman running back. Middle, Middletown Mass. First and 15 for RPI. White House man in the slot on the right-hand side. Sabinus takes the carry, gets hit. He tried to back up again this time, but uh, somebody came along and hit him, pushed him back. Picks up three, though, to the 37. Similar to the first time he carried it, um, that 200 pounds and, and five foot eight, he's strong, Kurt. He, he, he keeps churning those legs. It's not easy to get him down. You don't one arm tackle him. Second and 12, Avery looks to throw, incomplete. Is that tipped at the line? Maybe not. I think he was no. looking for Lane just beyond the 40. It was it was uh, thrown on the ground. It was, wasn't high enough. Hit the ground pretty quickly. So we'll say that's not a well-thrown ball. I think he got out of his hand. I think it might have slipped out. Incomplete on second down. Third and 12 RPI at their own 37. Avery in the shotgun. Drops it off short, and that's to Venice, I believe, to the 40, but he didn't get much. Only a couple of yards. He was in a mass of bodies at that point, and he had no way to get out of that. That was, an, send out Franks. That was an interesting call, to, a, a read for him to throw there, because it was about five guys right around him. It was not a good place to put the ball. Franks back to kick again. Franks gets a snap. His first punt was blocked. This one's a low kick, and it kicks an RPI bounce and grabbed by WPI at the four. The return man grabbed that, and he's going to make it back out to the eight, and that's about it. Normally, you don't grab the ball in that circumstance, but I don't think that was going to make the end zone. I think that's what the return man was worried about, too. Nick Schlatz was the first one down. Joined by a host of engineers. 
But once again, RPI has not put the ball in the end zone yet, but they, they've moved the ball fairly well. Not so much on that drive, but the other drives before that, they moved pretty well. Ball's at the eight for WPI. Ecker, the return man, is the one who grabbed it and didn't let the ball have a chance to get into the end zone. Run on first down, rush on first down, gets out to about the 11-yard line. Again, Ecker, the return man, saw the ball bouncing. I don't think he thought it was going to make the end zone, and that's why he grabbed it. Yeah, Tregney, one of the many guys there on that tackle. The middle linebacker and assistant captain. Kobe Tregney. That was Lynch on first down with the carry for WPI. This is a defender in the roster. But WPI's been hit with some injuries, and that may be why he's switched to the other side of the ball at times. Second down and seven after Lynch gained three. Pass that's incomplete. He's back to us. I go ahead and back to us. I don't know exactly what happened, but the ball was there, and then about a second later dropped to the ground in front of him. Orkowski covered him very well, too. Look at the replay. I go never had that. Orkowski's a real good defender. As we said earlier, he was all league as a junior and a captain of the team. Says a lot about what his teammates think of him. Third down and seven. Half back to Eckler, under pressure, gets rid of the ball, intercepted by the engineers to the 10, down to about the eight yard line. Hey Bear, hey Bear, picks another one off. That's the second one of the night tonight for the engineers. I believe the first one was by Lanieri. A D back and uh, a bear is a linebacker. First and goal at the eight for RPI. We need three nothing with 826 to go first half. WPI's defense needs to come up big now. Second interception by RPI today's game. Second turnover by WPI. RPI has won. They fumbled down inside the five on their first possession. And flags come out right as the ball is snapped, and this has got to be going against RPI. <laughs> RPI will back up five. So RPI is back at the 13 for first and goal from the 13. They can blame themselves for not being in the end zone tonight. Well, they still got this series of downs. Oh, Avery. yes. Avery keeps it himself on first down and Avery. avoids one tackle and stopped at the 11. So he got two on first down. It'll be second and goal from the 11 for RPI. Yeah, they're mixing the, mixing the plays up very well. Uh, they haven't thrown long too often tonight. And a few times that they did, or one time anyway, it was an overthrow. And Kadar was there, but the ball was thrown over his head. Second and 11, or second and goal from the 11 for RPI. 7.45 to go here, first half. 3 nothing. RPI leads. Avery on the option, keeps it himself, goes inside, and he gets back to just inside the original line of scrimmage, setting up a third and goal from about the seven. I don't know why he didn't pitch on that one. Third and goal, RPI, looking to make this a two-score game. The running back was, was pretty open, nobody covering very much. But you gotta make that quick decision. Avery runs that pretty well. Hogan, one of the wideouts moving in towards the line on third down. Avery looks to throw, doesn't see anything. Now starts running with it and he stops the line of scrimmage. Good D by WPI as they pretty much contained the engineers. Martell on the tackle for WPI. One of the things you notice tonight, Kurt, is that Avery's receivers have been covered a lot tonight. Every time he's, he's had to put the ball under his arm and run it 
on three times that were three or four times that were definitely a, a pass situation. Franks to come out to try a field goal. This is a 24-yard attempt from the left hash. Snap, spots down, kick is up, almost blocked, but Franks is able to get it through. And RPI leads 6-0 with 6-16 to go in the first half. Well, the engineer's offense is uh, is moving the ball, but can't get in the end zone. Franks has two field goals, and if you're just tuning in, it's 6-16 to go in the first half. RPI leads 6-0, and we want to remind you, you're listening to Rensselaer football on 91.5, WRPI Troy. Kurt Stutt and Bob Conway on the call. A little frustrating for the offense, I'll bet. Well, this is only game four of the season, and we've already talked about this year, opportunities missed. Yeah. Their defense has played very well, though. WPI got a couple of good passes. Franks boots the ball away. This one isn't coming out of the end zone. WPI takes it to 25. That's three for three touchbacks. And he had a 50 and a 24 yard field. 51 yard field. 51, sorry. Don't forget the one. That's important. Absolutely. It's kind of weird being here for a night game because I'm used to looking out and seeing people and things walking around, and now I just see black. <laughs> it's kind of weird. RPI not, doesn't, well, they didn't play home night games at the 86 field because there were no lights. I like it. I wouldn't like it every game, but I, I do like it sometimes. First down run gets nothing. Couple of, lost a couple in Lynch as he got caught in the backfield right after he got the ball from Eckler. Call a loss of two for WPI back to the 23. That was Brandon Cook in on the tackle for the engineers. Cook had, uh, he led the team in seven tackles last week. He's a, uh, he's a linebacker, 5'11", 210, and he's a junior. Second and 12 WPI from the 23. Eckler. Keeps it himself after he fakes the handoff. Runs straight ahead, gets back to the 25 and stops at the 26. WPI is trying to establish the running game and it's not working right now. WPI, I think, is taking a timeout. Eckler lost his helmet. Yeah, Tom Bennett was in on that tackle. Number 74. No, maybe not. No, I'm wrong on that. The official stopped the clock. Eckler lost his helmet on that play, and he had to run off the field. So Eckler is off the quarterback. No timeout. No timeout, so Eckler has to stay out for one play. We got third and nine. Can't tell you right now who's in at QB at the moment. Low snap taken by that gentleman. Throw over the middle. Incomplete. Good coverage. That's Grills who came in. Jacob Grills came in at quarterback for that play. Barkowski, very good coverage for the engineers. Engineer defense playing very well tonight. Very well. I'm sure Coach, Coach I would like to see that offense get the ball in the end zone. I'm sure he's happy with the defense as well. Punt sent away by Tavernelli. Gidar retreats to his own 21. Good kick by Tavernelli. Actually, his punt today is good. Gidar to the 25 to the 30. Sideline, got some blockers. Now pushed out at the 40. So it'll be pretty good field position for RPI. 4.46 to go here. First half, RPI leads 6-0. Yeah, RPI looks good tonight. I think they're getting better every week, but uh, the offense last week, the timing looked really good. It looked like they really had the timing down well. Tonight, I just think the secondary for 
P.I. has played well. Avery has had to keep the ball on four occasions when he wanted to throw. First and 10 RPI at their own 40. Avery drops straight back, looks over the middle, throws incomplete. Wide open with Colas at the 45 and he couldn't handle it. Yeah, the ball was thrown a little high to the right, but Reggie could have caught that. Easy for me to say sitting up here. Especially with Reggie, what an athlete he is. Second and 10 at the 40. Four wide out formation. Straight ahead on the handoff. Slats gets to the 42, and RPI is looking at third and long. Jack Downey, number 67. Number 96, Peter Salem on the tackle for WPI. Third and eight RPI. Up six nothing here as there's a little over four left to go in the first half. Avery two right out, wide out to the right, one to the left. Avery drops back, Slats is in the flat. He gets, oh no, dropped it. Slats was wide open, probably could have had a first down, but he oh. dropped a, the pass was there, but he dropped it. Just one of those things, the ball was well thrown. And you're right, Kurt, he had some daylight ahead of him for about 20 yards. I mean, it was a little low on the throw, but you gotta catch that. Yes. I wish we had a roster of WPI because it's hard picking up people on the two deep because the numbers aren't in order. <laughs> Booted away by Franks. Grabbed at the 15 to the 20. Across the 20, a little bit farther up ahead, and I, I think that's Ecker again on the return. Yep. Yep, Ecker on the return for WPI. How long was that kick? I didn't notice the what line we were on. Uh, maybe 45 yards. Kind of stunned me with that question. 3.50 to go in the first half, 6 nothing RPI leads. Next week, Merchant Marine Academy away. Following week, homecoming, St. Lawrence, the 1,000th game in Rensselaer football history. First down play for WPI is not going to find any daylight. Wow, they stood him up, and four guys stood him up, led by number 40, Mark Grimes. They all were there. Lynch could find no avenue to get through that line. I think Pilla was with him. I believe Chris Hansman was the, was the other one. Ball to 23, loss of one for WPI. Second and 11. Eckler throws complete to the 29. Boynton was out of bounds right away after he caught the ball. WPI trying to piece something together. The running game has not gotten them the yards they want. Not at all. And bus, bus covered that very well, but one of those sideline ones that you really can't do anything about. Third down, four wide out formation for WPI, third and five, 34. And now WPI will take a timeout. Igo turned around and called that, saw something or didn't like something, so WPI takes a timeout, their first timeout of this first half. 6 nothing. RPI lead at 2.45 to go in the half. A right, uh, couple of things. Uh, as I told you earlier, Reggie Colas and uh, Nick Burkowski are the captains. WPI record was is one and two. They beat Curry 29 to seven. Worcester State, uh, they lost 30 to seven. And they lost to Norwich with five seconds to go in a game, 10 to seven. This is the third night game played here at ECAV. RPI's won the first two, 21 to seven against Union. And they won the second one, 51 to 21 versus Castleton. 
So far, so good at night. Timeout is over with. Third and five for WPI at their own 34, trailing by six in the first half. Four wide out formation. Eckwood drops back, throws over the middle. That's complete, and that's a first down. Big hit at the 35, but Igo holds on to the ball, and it'll be WPI first down there. He just got it. I think number 24 for the engineers, uh, Teague Florio, was uh, in on that hit. It was, a, it was a hard hit, and he had his helmet off. He had to come out. Also, a penalty against RPI. I think that's a block below the waist. It's a blocking infraction somehow against RPI, and the ball moves out to the 50. That's 15 yards tacked on to the end of the play. End of the ball, just touching the 50-yard line for WPI. Two and a half to go here in the first half. Six-nothing RPI leads. WPI going with the four wide out formation. The running game hasn't worked too well. Just as I say that, they hand the ball off to Pierce and he gets two yards to 48. Pilla, first guy there for the engineers. Coming up on two minutes to go in the first half. WPI trying to get on the scoreboard before they go into the locker room. Yeah, I was just trying to see who the other guy was. Greg A. Bear was the second man there with Pilla. The seventh possession for WPI today. Three times they've gone into RPI side of the field and they have no points to show for it. Second and eight. Eckler intercepted by the engineers. Missed his man. Headed back in the other direction for RPI. Borkowski, Borkowski to the 25 and then caught from behind and put down at about the 22. So RPI gets another turnover. 134 to go in the half. They've got a chance to get more points on the ball. That's three picks tonight. They had four last week in the game. RPI secondary has really developed into a very good secondary. Third INT for WPI. They lose some battles jumping in the air, but very seldom do they get beat. Avery on first down, fakes the handoff, throws, tipped up in the air, and it goes incomplete. Lynch, who's playing both ways at this point. Flag. Flag also on the play. Lynch was the nearest person after the ball got tipped to trying to catch that one. That was a late flag, too. We are waiting anxiously for what this call is going to be, and RPI is starting to back up. An eligible receiver downfield against RPI. See, as I said earlier, RPI has beaten themselves. Every time they get anywhere near the red zone, they get a penalty. That's really hurt them. But right now, it's second down. And they're still in very good position to score before they have. Well, that should be a minus five yards. And they should get first down again if the penalty is accepted. That's right. RPI will be backed up to the 28. That's yeah, first down. And they get first down back. It'll be first and 15 for RPI. At their own 28, and now we've got another whistle. The head linesman's coming over. I think the referee said second down. I think he's correcting himself to state it's first down. First and 15 RPI at the WPI 28. Avery looks to throw, he's got plenty of time, plenty of time, nobody's open. Avery rolls to his left, now he's got the ball and runs out of bounds around the 21. Now, uh, once again, that's the fifth time tonight he couldn't find anybody open. And that give credit to the secondary of WPI. Because that has been a strength of the engineers and obviously they scouted it well. So far. Second and eight for RPI at the 21. Hey, 
Three wide out formation. Avery gives to Drumming. Drumming straight ahead, gets hit from behind, will push from behind, and stopped right around the 15 on his forward progress. It'll be third and about two for RPI. 1-10 to go in the half, 6-0 RPI leads. You are listening to Engineer Football on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Kurt Sutt and Bob Conway on the call for you here from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. Stephen Barker was in, in on that call uh, on the tackle for uh, WPI. Big down here. Third, third and two at the 15. Low snap. Avery gets it. Handoff. Straight ahead, I'm thinking this is the first down. There's a huge pile right around the 13-yard line, and they'll stop the clock. They may have to look at this. 36 seconds left in the half. See where the spot is here. I think he got it. I did, too. And they're going to measure. Referee signal for the markers to come over. They're on the far side. They kind of come over almost the near side. And they'll take a closer look at this. 36 seconds left here, first half. Six nothing, RPI leads, WPI in the transit trophy game. It sure would make a big difference having six or seven more on the board going in. Precision, they bring the chains over, and it's a first down. I thought he made it. Now they got 36 seconds to go, folks. It's six nothing RPI with 30 second, 36 seconds to go in the half. RPI just took a timeout before the clock could start again. RPI on top, 6-0. 51 and 24-yard field goals by Franks have put them up in today's game. Let me tell you, as I said, next week is uh, the Merchant Marine away. St. Lawrence at home for homecoming. The Southlands, the 1,000th game in RPI history. Uh, then we're away at Rochester and home for family weekend with Hobart, and away at Springfield, and home with Union. Play a 10-game schedule now. Hasn't always been that way. In fact, it's been two years in a row, but before that, it was Kevin Earl was the coach when we played 10 games. And they are, every other week, they're either home or on the road in this schedule. So November 1st is the by week. First and 10 for RPI, ball at the 13. 36 seconds left, Avery rolling out to his right. Now looking left, throws, that's complete to Lane in the flat. Lane slips and falls to 10. He had a defender in front of him, but never had a chance to make a move that was, or known. Yeah, was number, in front of him. number 54 in on the tackle for, for WPI. And one again, that's Stephen Barker again. RPI takes another timeout with 27.9 seconds left. Second and seven at about the 10 yard line would be what it is for RPI. That was too bad for Lane because he's got an ability to do that stutter step and get by people. And he just tripped. Nobody tripped him, he tripped himself. I had mentioned earlier the games in the Liberty League today, finals, St. Lawrence defeated Union 28 to 20. That came down to under two minutes to go. Hobart defeated Merchant Marine 42 to seven. That was over at the half. And Springfield defeated Rochester 63 to 27. That game was also over at the half. 63? 63 to 27, wow. Springfield won. You know what? St. Lawrence has played Union very tough for the last three or four years. Every year it's close. Twenty-eight seconds left, twenty-seven point nine for when he gets technical. Second and seven, ball on the ten for RPI, leading by six. Avery drops back looking to throw. 
Gets away from some pressure. Avery to the five. Avery still on his feet. Avery dives. Doesn't make the end zone. Nice effort by Avery. Flag on the play. Avery's out at the two. He had the ball in his right hand. He was going for the pylon. He never made it. He actually lost the ball out of bounds. If this is the penalty on RPI. Once again, last time we fumbled on the one. There was a penalty two times before this. Costly penalties. Right now the referee is talking to the WPI players, or is he talking to the umpire? Cut block, did he say? Cut block, yes. It's a personal foul against RPI, so that backs him up in the point of the foul. They'll go back to the 17. They'll say the two yard line is where that happened. RPI's back to the 17 with 20 seconds to go. Wasting opportunities galore. They should have three touchdowns right now. It's second down again. They need to get to the three for a first down. So it's second and 14, only 20 seconds left. One timeout available for RPI. Avery looking left, nothing. Looking right, rolling right. Avery on the run, Avery to the 10. He gets hit down at about the seven. And RPI calls their last timeout of the half with 1.7 seconds to go. Third down. Time out on the field with 11.7 seconds to go in the first half. RPI leads WPI six to nothing. We remind you, you're listening to Rensselaer football on 91.5 WRPI Troy. So if you're RPI, what are you thinking here? You have no more timeouts left. So if third down doesn't work, you want to get points and put Franks out there, but you can't if you run a running play, you may not have time because you can't stop the clock. So you've got to be thinking throw. I think you either throw or, or kick a field goal right, right away. Uh, I, I, I want, I would hope they'd go for the six. RPI's had trouble throwing downfield and it's generally worse when you get close to the end zone because everybody's just closer together at that point. Everybody was had been covered. You know, we seldom, if ever, this year, throw to the tight end. Offense comes out for third down and four. The ball at the seven yard line. 11.7 seconds left. Avery is looking end zone, looking downfield, throws, that's complete to Colas, touchdown, RPI! Nice drop by Colas. Very nice route by Reggie Kohler. And that was a big one for RPI. Puts him up 12-0 with 6.1 seconds to go in the half. PAT to follow. First touchdown of the game. Either way, it's WPI with no points, no touchdown. Franks have to try the extra point. That spots down, kick up and good. Again, good penetration of a WPI getting somebody in trying to block it. Well, RPI has moved the ball very well on offense, most series, but some costly mistakes. They, they just have, have red zone trouble putting the ball in the end zone until that series. And that came down to six seconds. So they got the 13 now, they had two field goals and a seven with six to go, six seconds to go in the first half. Good game, though. It's a, I think it's a fun game to watch.
Frank sees the ball up. If he can get this one into the end zone, that would force WPI to scrimmage from the 25 with little time left. Boots the ball away. Good kick out of the end zone. WPI gets it to 25. Is that four or five? Four. They've been started the game, three RPI scores. Four touchbacks, four interceptions by the secondary. Defense shut out ball in the first half. The offense flashes of goodness. Nothing real bad, but uh, making some mistakes at uh, tough times. Put it that way. WPI takes the knee. And they'll go into the locker room. RPI can no sign out. Put the ball back if they wanted to. And it'll be 13 nothing after one half of play here at the Champions Stadium. I think you go into the locker room on this one. RPI is up by two scores. But if you look at the number of turnovers and look at the way the game's progressed, you've got to be thinking RPI should be up by more. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think they, they very well could have had three more touchdowns, at least two, but I think three. But it was nice to see the 51-yarder by Franks. RPI winning the turnover battle four to one, but the one for RPI a little costly when they turned it over at the two. You got a 51-yard field, 51 field goal by Franks, a 24-yard field goal by Franks, and then the touchdown which was a seven-yard reception by Colas from Avery near the end of the first half. The Franks conversion has made it what is now a 13 to nothing score. We will take a break, run you down what happened last weekend in Liberty League football action, the last weekend of non-conference games for most teams except Union, I believe. And that will be during halftime. We'll be back shortly for the second half of play. The score here after one half, it is RPI 13, WPI 0. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
the uh, football and we to thank the Montgomery Sports Bureau for their continued support. Fans, remember, take your game ticket to the Recovery Sports Grill at the Hilton Garden Inn in Troy and receive a free dessert with a purchase of $8.99 or more.
RTI 13 to nothing at the half. My name is Kirk Scott here with Bob Conway. We're bringing you all the action live on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Before we get started with the second half, we'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to wrpi.org and pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're sending something out over the air, we'll provide it for you on that feed. Once again, that is wrpi.org. Got some stats there? Yes, I do. Uh, total offense plays and yards. WPI 33 plays for 81 yards. RPI 33 plays for 143 yards. The punt returns. Uh, RPI, I mean WPI 3 for 32. RPI 2 for 27. And their returns. Uh, punts. WPI 2 for 57 yards. And 3 for 32.7. Time of possession, 14.26 for w, R, uh, WPI, 15.34 for RPI. Third down conversions, 1 of 7 for WPI, 4 of 10 for RPI. Fourth down conversions, WPI 1 of 3, RPI didn't have any. Red zone scores. WPI 0 for 1, RPI 2 for 3, one of which was a field goal. No? Yeah. One was a field goal. In terms of uh, passing. Well, we're underway here oh, okay. to start out half number two. Kicking on the kickoff is low along the ground, taken by one of the RPI up men, and he returns it to the 33. And that's where RPI starts out. RPI won the coin toss to further selection of the second half. And they have taken the ball to start out half number two, up 13 to nothing here in Troy. That was Danny Bright. Took that kickoff return. Danny Bright, number 32, was a tight end. Sophomore for Nanuet, New York. That's some more statistics a little later. Crimson is the color for WPI. Crimson and gray are their official colors. White's not involved with that. First down for RPI. Slash with the carry, weaves his way through the line and gets four. Let's call it eh, close to five, but really it's four for Schlatz on first down for the engineers of RPI. And that will say five. I had 30, number 35 on the tackle, but nobody. Murtaugh. I have Murtaugh's 35. Okay. I don't have him on the two deep. Second down and five. The engineer is close to a first down. Schlatz is down at the 48, and that's a first down for RPI. Schlatz is the bread and butter guy. He, uh, he and uh, number five, Drummond. Drummond's not that big. He's about 5'10", 190. Oh, he's big, but... But uh, Schlatz is 6'2", 215. Schlatz is caught in the backfield and taken down for a loss of three. That was Matthew. Number 31. No, I have 91, Matthew. 91's Ryan Matthew. He's a senior. 6'4", 240. Second and 12 for RPI. I got to think the scoreboard is broken with the ball on section of the scoreboard because all we get is the first digit of any two digit numbers. Colas turns around and asks the referee for a timeout. He'll get one. Now, is there some discussion, dispute about this? RPI timeout. Never like to waste one early in the second half. Timeouts are like gold in the second half. 13.31 to go here in the third quarter. RPI leading WPI 13 to nothing. Uh, going back to the stats from the first half. 
Eckler for WPI was five for 15 passing, three interceptions. Four interceptions, didn't he? Uh, he had 72 yards, a long of 37, got sacked once. Avery was four for nine for 39 yards, one TD, a long of 25. Usually, RPI's passing game it gets a lot more yardage than that, but WPI secondaries played well. Receiving Igloo for WPI, two catches for 50. Boynton, two catches for 19. McGillicuddy, three, one catch for three yards. RPI second and 12 at their own 47 if they just burned a timeout for reasons we're not sure of. Give us the Colas. Colas finds some room to the 50. Colas is then stood up at the 48 of WPI. He finally gets the whistle as he's being pushed back. So his forward progress gets him to the 48. And he needs to get to the 41. They need seven on third down here, do the RPI engineers. They just don't look in sync right now. I don't know why. Don't know why. Maybe because it's a night game. It's not uncommon for athletes to get their rhythm upset if they have to start the game at a vastly different time. Who knows? Four wide out formation for RPI here on third down and seven. Avery looks to throw, looks downfield, and almost intercepted, and then goes flying back towards the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. Colas was the intended receiver. I think Murtaugh got his hands on it and batted it the other way, and luckily for RPI, it goes incomplete. <laughs> he really did bat it the other way, too. I mean, I think he was trying to grab it, and he didn't do a good, very good job of it. Franks comes out. Looks like RPI is going to punt the ball away. Ecker is back deep for WPI. He's standing inside his own 10. Franks boots it. Ecker's going to let that one go. Signals a fair catch, and that goes all the way. Actually, I think it went on the fly, hit the back of the end zone, so the ball will come out to the 20. 12.32 to go here in the third quarter. RPI leads 13-0. Okay, receiving for the engineers in the first half. Cole is two for 32 yards, one TD along a 25. The Venus one for four yards, and Matt Lane one for three yards. Not a great passing first half for the engineers. WPI starting out, they've started out most of the drives between the 20 and the 30, one at the two, one at the eight, and one at the RPI 32. And this is their ninth possession of the game, first possession of the second half, trailing by 13. Throw is complete to Ecker at the 25, breaks one tackle, now brought down, but I think the throw of progress had him near the 27. You know, I think that's a bad spot. I think he should have had the 27. Yeah, he was brought down. Uh, number 31 hit him at first, Phil Lanieri, but uh, 46, Connor Young brought him down. Ball's at the 26, they'll say. Second and nine for WPI, trying to find the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Starting after season one and two on a two game losing streak coming into today's game. Eckler out of the shotgun, takes a snap, throw, oh, thought he had it. I thought it was gonna be grabbed by Green, but as he tried to pull his hands, the ball down with his hands, he lost it and it goes out of bounds, incomplete on second down. Yeah, one, once again, number 46 did a, did a really good job. Connor Young defending for the engineers. For RPI engineers, sorry. Third and four for the WPI engineers at the 26, their own 26. Two wideouts each side for WPI. Look for that slant this time. The snap, actually we got a new quarterback in there. I didn't notice when that change was made and it's a pass complete to the far side and that's down to the 40, WPI's 40 and it'll be a first down for WPI. Caught by Igo, in right now is Grills at QB and I'm not sure when that change occurred or if it occurred right at the beginning of the half. I goes was all alone in the flat, like nobody covering over there. So Grills in at QB, spelling Eckler. First and 10 WPI at the 40, their own 40, 11.20 to go here in the third quarter. And WPI had multiple guys in motion, this is a flag. 
Grills is a senior, by the way. And, and the, uh, the first quarterback was, I believe, a sophomore. Yes, Eckler's a sophomore. WPI backs up five. They're back to their own 35 for what will be a first and 15. And one last time, Grills in at quarterback for the second half, or at least starting the second half. It's a pretty big boy. 6'2", 225 quarterback. Grills has trouble with the handoff. Ball is loose, covered by RPI. Fifth turnover for WPI. RPI has it near the WPI 29-yard line. Pilla, I think, I think Pilla got that fumble. Bill is, Bill is a pretty steady player, you know, Kurt? He does a lot out there. Coutinho on the recovery for RPI of that fumble. WPI has turned it over five times. Interception, 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 no. Three interceptions and a fumble, four times. My mistake. Four times. I think I said at the end of the half they turned over four times. It was three at that point, four now. And flag on the play before we even snapped the ball. I could have swore we had four interceptions. Yeah, probably because I said that at the end of the first half. No, I did too. <laughs> no, you can, I'm trying to get the blame on me. <laughs> three interceptions and a fumble for WPI. They turned it over four times. And RPI just got backed up five on a procedure call. First and 15, Avery fakes the handoff, looks to put the ball up, throw, that's complete to the 20, to the 18. Caught by McHugh, and that'll be a first down for RPI. Sean Murphy on the tackle for WPI, nice route. McHugh over near the sideline. It'll be a first down for RPI at the WPI, they'll say the 17 at this point. 10 and a half to go in the third quarter. RPI leads 13 to nothing. Engineers, Avery, gives it to Venus on first down, finds a hole, stays on his feet, still on his feet, first down, and he's to the five. It'll be first and goal for RPI. This Tavinas kid can really run, and, and he, he turns, he turned totally around in a circle to get by that guy. Spin right by him. Ball on the five for RPI. First and goal. Less than 10 to go here in the quarter. Tavinas takes it again. Does he have it? Does he have it? Touchdown, RPI. I'm telling you, we're going to see a lot of that kid. He, uh, as I said last week, six carries for 84 yards and a TD. Tonight he's played, you know, a lot, considering that he's only a freshman. He gets the second TD of the year. Snap spot kick for the extra point is up and good. Franks puts it through. That makes it 20 to nothing RPI with 9.54 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, Tavinas is, uh, you know, like I said, he's a 200 pounder. He's only 5'8", but he runs hard. And he, he cuts well. He spins well. It's not easy to bring him down. But he's played two games and he's got two touchdowns, so not bad. WPI now down three scores in the third quarter. They have not got the running game going. They're on their second quarterback of the day, assuming Grills comes out to start this series. Did he fumble that ball? Grills was trying to hand off, okay. and he and the runner were basically joined together, and they lost the ball. Yeah, I didn't know which, one, of, which one of them had it at the time. I think Grills actually had it and was trying to give it, yep. and that's when it was lost. I think the fumble goes against Grills. 
because the running back never had possession of it. Andrew Franks' kick is out of the end zone, and WPI, as usual, takes the ball to 25. How many times can you say it? The guy's just a weapon. <laughs> Field position so important in, foot, in football. And he, for four years, has probably given us the best field position in RPI history for four years, I bet. First and 10, WPI to 25. Down by 20. 9.54 to go in the third quarter. Grills is out there as QB. Puts the ball up in the air towards the sideline. That's complete near the 40. This will be a first down to the 45. As WPI, their best plays today have been through the air. Yes. And they, run, they like that sideline route. I think... Uh, that was Ecker on the reception. Yeah, I think... Uh, Bus was over... Not, uh, yeah, Bus over there, but... It was well thrown in towards the sideline and easy catch for the receiver. First and 10, WPI at the 45. That's a handoff on first down. Pierce gets the ball and makes it out to the 49. That was a straight ahead run by Trey Pierce. Well, he's got uh, number Connor McCrum was there on the tackle. McCrum's playing pretty well lately. He's only a sophomore, 6'4", 235. Four wide out formation for WPI, two on each side. Looks like Pierce in the backfield next to Grills on second down and six. Grills looks to throw, incomplete, off the fingertips of Green at about the 46 of RPI. Brandon Cook right there with him, and Phil Lanieri was in the vicinity as well. Eight forty-nine to go in the third quarter. RPI leads it twenty to, to nothing. WPI third and six at their own forty-nine. Rolls out of the shotgun. Here's in the backfield. Four wideouts. Sees nothing to his right. Now has to run. Rolls to his left. Throws. That's complete. Eckert has it. He's got a first down at the forty and finally tackled at the thirty-nine. And WPI is able to move the chains. Yeah, he was planted right right on the marker almost, just past the marker. Oh, flag on the play, this should be coming back. And nobody was covering him. He was just sitting over there waiting for that ball. So it'll be third down again, holding call against WPI, and that backs them up to their own 39. It'll be third and 16. Greenish is getting some good time for the in engineers tonight. Alex Alexander Greenage, and he's a, only a sophomore as well. 5'11", 225. Miller Place, New York. Good solid kid. Pretty big kid. Third and 16. Grills drops back, puts the ball up, looking sideline, Dad, you know what, caught, I think, but when you're five feet out of bounds, it doesn't count. <laughs> I think it was a nice catch by Rabidou, but he was well out of bounds, not even close. See, that, that's the thing that, not that particular one, but that type of pass is what they've been completing tonight. That one where the defender can't do much because it's thrown over the receiver's head, He's catching it, it's a feet inbounds, your arms practically out of bounds. WPI to punt. That's the balls at their own 39. Booted away by Tavernelli. High kick. Gadar takes it at the 14. 15. Hit and escapes a couple of hits at the 20. Gadar is finally down. Stalled to 25. 8 10 to go here. Third quarter. RPI leads 20 to nothing. Let's take a look at the uh, the Rensselaer football schedule for the rest of the year. We said next week, Saturday, October 4th, at Kings Point, the U.S. 
Merchant Marine Academy. Then home against St. Lawrence. RPI's 1,000th football game. First and 10, RPI at their own 25. Avery on the give on first down to Schlatt. This time runs outside, which is not his typical MO. And he gets to the 35 and what should be a first down for the engineers. Kevin Lynch on the tackle, number 34. After St. Lawrence, Rochester's away, October 18th. Back here in the next week, October 25th with Hobart. And the following week at Springfield on November 8th. And the Dutchman Choose game here at RPI on November 15th. November 1st is the bye week. First and 10 RPI at their own 35. Seven and a half to go. Halfway through the third quarter, engineers up 20 to nothing. And this run goes to the right. Maybe about four on that. Engineers are, I think, wearing down WPI a little bit right now. That was Schlatz on the carry for RPI. Their, uh, their runs have been more effective recently. I think in the trenches they're starting to... Uh, uh, that could be because Coach I rotates the linemen so often they're fresh. Second and seven for RPI. Colas drops back into the backfield. Avery under pressure, gets away from one man, hit by the second man, hit by the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, and now he stopped at the 40, no, 38 for a loss of one. He actually did a good job getting away from the first two. Not a good job by the offensive line on that play. I don't think we've, we have thrown more than two downfield complete passes tonight. There's not been a lot downfield by RPI. They've been covered. That's, just, that's been the problem. Third and seven for RPI, back at their own 38. Avery takes it up in a design draw, and he stopped at the 43. That's two yards short of a first down. He had no intention of throwing that ball. His intention was always to run with it. And stopped at the 43, the engineers of RPI will send out the punt team. I think I can go for this. <laughs> you know what? I would not go for it here. You got Franks, who's a good punter. You put WPI deep. WPI's been having trouble moving the ball. Just get it to the other side of the field and let your defense do some work. Franks boots it, takes a bounce at the 25, stays in bounds, now rolls out at the 16. Good kick by Franks, puts WPI at the 16-yard line. 20 to nothing, RPI leads with 5.33 to go here in quarter number three. And we remind you, you're listening to Rensselaer football. 91.5, WRPI, Troy. Kurt Sutton, Bob Conway on the call. WPI needs to do something if they want to get back in this. I mean, it's only three scores. You get a TD, you get a stop, you get a TD. Now it's a one-score game, but you have to get something. They need to move downfield. Grills takes a snap out of the shotgun. Looks in the middle. Throw. That's complete. That'll be a first down to the 36. Green caught it and immediately fell to the ground. Yeah, he was wide open. Yeah, he was not covered very well at all in the secondary. It's one of the few times tonight coverage wasn't good. First and 10, WPI at their own 36. A quick moving game. We're not even two hours in, and there's 5-10 left to go in quarter number three. Ball on the left hash. They'll put three receivers on the left, or the right, pardon me, one on the left. Grills. Has time, had room to run, now throws and it bounces incomplete around the 50 yard line. Grills actually had a lot of the sideline to his right to go for. He would have been better off running that. Uh, uh, no. Once again, our, uh, our captain was back there doing a great job. Nick Burkowski, very good defender. Probably our best defender in the secondary. To be honest with you, I think WPI would be well served to let their quarterback run some. To keep RPI a little honest on defense. Yep. Second down and 10. This is a run straight up the middle. It'll be about four. 
but I can never figure out who caught, who caught the ball. To the 40-yard line, it's a tough four. Yeah, he broke through a crowd and ended up with one, one guy hanging on him. That was Pierce with the carry for WPI yeah. out to the 40. Third down and six, WPI. I think Greenwich on the tackle. WPI to the line. Pierce in the backfield, Grills QB, four receivers to each side. Grills takes the snap. Now he's going to run with the ball straight ahead. He's got a first down. Grills to the 50 and stopped at the 48. Okay, he's stopped by Greenwich. Greenwich is having quite a few tackles in there since he got in the game. Number 44, Alexander Greenwich. WPI moving the ball, 4-12 to go here, third quarter, 20 to nothing, RPI leads. Defense has played such a good game, I hope they get back focused here. They haven't been too focused the last three or four plays. WPI staying with the four wide receiver formation. Grills against a four-man rush, puts the ball up in the air, that's caught, complete for a first down, immediately tackled near the 36. Forward progress for Green should have him right around the 36-37. Is that green? Yeah, it was green. 80, yes. Another first down for WPI at the RPI 37. They've gotten down to the 21 and the 24 on previous drives. Both of those back in the first quarter has WPI. Since those two drives, they've only been on the RPI side of the field once. And that was to the 48 back in the second quarter. Grills gives to Pierce. Pierce finds a hole, and he gets to the 31. That's a pickup of six. <coughs> six picked up there by WPI. Lynch, who came in doing some running for WPI in the first half. I don't think I've seen him on offense in the second half. Pierce has been carrying most of the load at the running back position. And grills in relief of Eckler, the starting quarterback for WPI. He'll put a man in the slot this time with three wide receivers. Grills, pump fakes. Now puts the ball up in the air, and that is caught, but couldn't maintain his balance. Great catch, though. I go got it. Had trouble maintaining his balance. Was able to get down to the three. It'll be first and goal for WPI. Yeah, this, uh, this series... Uh the defense is not having hardly any pass rush on the quarterback. He just sits back there and waits until somebody gets open, fires it. 2.25 to go, third quarter. RPI leading 20 to nothing. First and goal for WPI at the three. Let's see if the defense digs in now. They need to do. Changing the backfield for WPI, not sure who that is. Flag comes out on the play, Grills has the ball, tries to run for the end zone, can't make it. He stopped at the two. The flag came out pretty early in that play, so time, they'll stop the clock and we'll sort this one out. I think it was bust back there. No, I think it was, uh, it was uh, Mark Grimes. Should have known by the kind of hit. He hits hard. Well, the play doesn't count in the end. It was illegal procedure against RPI. They'll be backed up, or probably against WPI. They're backed up to the eighth. It'll be first and goal from the eighth for WPI. First and goal from the eight, WPI. They'll put four wide receivers out there this time, and Pierce is again in the backfield. Grills, before he gets hit, throws the ball, and it's incomplete. He actually sent it between two defenders as the receivers were farther away. The two defenders didn't see the ball, and they raced away from it as it was coming towards them. Yeah, they could have caught that. Yes, if, if either one had stopped, they probably could have caught that, but they had no idea the ball was coming because the receivers didn't know either. They didn't know either, so nobody did anything about that, and it goes incomplete on second. Is that first down? Yeah, first down. It's second down now. This is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Sutton, Bob Conway on the call for you. 
Third quarter winding down, RPI with a 20 point lead. WPI second and goal from the eight. Grill sends a man in motion. Throws and it is tipped and goes incomplete. Nice coverage over there. Ecker was the intended receiver. He got a hand on it and the ball just hung up there, but nobody could grab it. So it's incomplete on second down. Third and goal from the eight for WPI. Grimes was the guy that broke that up. Hit a couple of other guys there too, but he was the primary guy. Grimes is a hard-nosed player. 6'1", 220, 215. Third and goal from the eight, WPI. Three receivers on the right, one on the left. Pearson to Banfield, drills out of the shotgun. Gets the snap, puts the ball in the air, incomplete. Best person who had a shot at that was Greenish. Right. Who was looking at the, who was looking at the quarterback and the ball just got to him too quickly for him to make a move on it. Now it's fourth down now. Fourth down for WPI, it's 136 left to go third quarter, and I have to think you keep the offense out there. Coach Icernia trying to get the fans into the... Fourth and goal from the eighth for WPI. Throws out of a shotgun. Throw that four wide affirmation for WPI. Big rush. Pass thrown, incomplete. It was tipped around the five, goes incomplete. And WPI turns it over on down for, I think, the second time today. Yes, third time, third time today. Coach Icerny was really happy with that. That defense has played well all night. And, and many times, not too far from the goal line. Actually hearing some real cheering tonight. It's it's nice. <laughs> it's a better crowd than we saw two weeks ago during the home opener. Avery on first down takes a snap. It was first and ten at the eight yard line, and it goes incomplete. Costello was looking for a flag around the 45, but he's not going to get one. He was covered by Sean Murphy. One twenty-six to go here, third quarter. RPI with the 20 point lead. They're up 20 to nothing. You need some room here, operate. Second and 10 from their own eight for RPI. Avery gives, I think that's Colas on the carry. And he gets out to about the 13. Nope, that was not Colas, that was. That was to Venus. Like to Venus on the carry. Brian Murtaugh on the tackle. Got five. It'll be third down and five RPI with a minute to go in the third quarter. Is Hogan, Hogan been playing tonight? Yes, I have seen him out there. I don't think anybody's thrown to him all night. No. Third down, Avery takes a snap, hands off to Venus, has it, breaks through the 15, to Venus still on his feet, he got a first down. He manages to go a long way across the field, gets beyond the 20, and that's a first down RPI. He is a tough runner, that to Venus. He just put his head down. He's tough. 200 pounds and he's strong. First and 10, RPI at their own 19. 25 seconds ago in the third quarter. RPI has a 20 to nothing lead. And off on first down. I'm gonna guess to Venus on the carry to the 23 in what was probably the last play of the third quarter. RPI does not have to snap the ball again. It was to Venus on the carry for about four yards. And the third quarter will end with RPI leading WPI 20 to nothing. Teams will switch sides and surely will be underway for quarter number four. Winner of this game goes into a four-way tie for first place in the Liberty League with Springfield, St. Lawrence, and Hobart. Loser goes to 0-1.
three-way tie for fifth place if you want to look at it that way. Four-way tie for fifth place if you want to look at it that way with Union, Rochester, and Mercer Green. I can't believe Springfield scored 63 points today. I can. I mean, they're a good team, usually. That's a lot of points. Rochester's not that bad over the years. Playing Springfield comes down to one question. Can you stop the triple option? If the answer is yes, you'll probably win. If the yeah. answer is no, you're going to give up a lot of points. Well, they did. <laughs> and I guess the answer for Rochester is no. And I think Rochester scored most of their points in the second half. Wow. Because when I, I ducked in to see what the scores were at halftime, the Springfield and Hobart scores were out of hand at halftime. Union was close. Union Street launch is close, and the other two were out of hand. Fourth quarter about to begin here in Troy. RPI second and six at their own 23. Hand off to Tavines. He gets to the 25, and that's about it. It'll be third down and about four for RPI. Number 24, Jason Lamb on the stop for WPI. Third and three, they'll officially call it. RPI going right to left, WPI left to right across your radio dial in this fourth quarter. RPI looking to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible and run out this clock. And now they'll throw, and that's incomplete on third down. Pass along the sidelines was intended for McHugh, but it was a little high through his hands, and RPI sends out the punting team. Uh, Casey McHugh is a, is a wide out. He came uh, to RPI as a quarterback, and uh, he's got good hands. He, he really backs up uh, the two top receivers, Hogan and Gadar. Franks boots the ball away. Ecker takes it at the 40, hit at the 44, that's all he'll see, but pretty good field position as WPI down by three scores needs to do something ASAP. Brandon, Brandon Cook hits like a bus. He is a hard hitter. Actually, this start at their 44 is the second best start for WPI in today's game. The only other time they were better was when they started at the RPI 32 after they blocked a Frank's punt. Their second best start of the game. Rolls remains in his quarterback. Pierce in the backfield with him. Four wide receivers. Throw. Intended for Igo, it was ahead of him near the 49 and incomplete, just a bad throw by Grills. Brandon Cook was all over him. 14-12 to go in the ball game. RPI leads it 20 to zero. Well, if WPI wants to get in on this game, they need Grills to be more on target. Because had that been on target, they would have picked up at least five or six. I'm looking for a rush on him. RPI's four-man rush hasn't been very successful. Not tonight. No. There. Pierce on second down gets caught from the backfield for a loss of two. Just as we say that, one guy. That was Pilla on the yeah. tackle for RPI. Absolutely. You can always count on him. He's there all the. He doesn't let the up let up on any plays at all. Third down and 11 for WPI. It's only a junior. Let's see how tough he is. WPI not varying the formation much for wideouts. Caught, that's complete to the 35 yard line. Falling down was Green when he caught the ball, but he's got a WPI first down. That slant play, is the receiver's been wide open about three or four times tonight. They'll put him back at the 37. WPI will take it anyway. It's a first down. 13.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. RPI leads 20 to nothing. We were talking about Anthony Pella. Of course, he's a good ball player. He's from Pennsylvania. 
good football. Two wideouts each side for Grills. Now they'll put one man in the backfield. Grills fakes a handoff, takes the ball himself, and he maybe got a yard. No, nope, he won't even get a yard. They'll say he was stopped at the 37 in the line of scrimmage, so that didn't work for WPI. Well, two guys stopped him. First was Brandon Cook, and, and secondly was Chris Onsman. Cook slowed him up a little bit, and Onsman nailed him. Second and 10 for WPI at the RPI 37. Not a lot of presence has WPI had in RPI territory. Last drive ended at the eight when they turned it over on downs. This time Pierce takes the handoff and he's tackled at the 30 and this is going to be a face mask against RPI. Uh, Pierce, I'm I think that was Brandon Cook. Brandon Cook, pardon me on the tackle for RPI, it's a face mask against him, that's 15 yards, and WPI will be down to the 15 with the penalty. I, I, I hate those kind of penalties. They're so stupid to do it. You know you're gonna get nailed on it no matter what. Well, this is one of those changes in the rule book. There used to be the five and the 15 on the face mask. Yep. Now they're all 15. So if it's the inadvertent, just grabbed it and tried to let go, it becomes a 15 now. So it may have been that. It may have been he tried to tackle him, got his hand up there, grabbed and it didn't mean to, but did it anyway and it's 15 yards. First and 10 WPI at the RPI 15. Down by 20, WPI incomplete. Tipped by an RPI defender at the five. And it falls incomplete on first down. Yeah, Bus, bus knocked it up in the air. Bus is involved in a lot of plays. Second and 10 from the 15 for WPI. Pierce in the backfield and four wide receivers. That's pretty much been it for this entire second half for WPI. Drills in at QB. Looks right, under pressure, hit and sack at the 18. That Kagan. I think, I think that's Teague, number 24. No, Kahagan on the tackle. Who? Kahagan, 26. Oh, uh, was it 24? No, it was 26, Kahagan. The six looks like a four. Yeah, I mean, believe me, I've made that mistake myself. <laughs> Kahagan's a linebacker. Third and 13 for WPI. This is it's four down territory from now on for WPI. So. Ball's at the 18. Grills back to throw, over the middle, incomplete. Did that bounce before it got to the receiver, the intended receiver? I, I think mean, it, it was did. Green. I think it did. It was, it was not well thrown. No, Marmy, that was not Green, that was Ecker. Was the intended receiver around the 10 or the five, somewhere around there. What number do you have for Green? <laughs> I have 80 for Green. What do you have? He's not listed on the two deep. <laughs> I have 80 for Green. Fourth down and 13 from the 18 yard line. Grills back to throw, puts it up in the air. He's got a man, that'll be a first down inside the five. Nice catch, hit immediately, but Ecker got to, got to the ball, brought it down, and it'll be first and goal WPI at the RPI four. Well, the defense is gonna have a tough time, but David done it all night. But they're pretty close down there now, we'll see. 11 to go in the fourth quarter, RPI leading by 20. WPI first and goal at the four. Looks like they got Rabidou in the backfield. Grills on first down. Will throw the ball, end zone, that's a touchdown. All alone, uncovered, and was that, Igo. And, and that that was uh, our best our best defender back there, Nick Barkowski. 
That was wide open. WPI gets on the board with 10.39 to go in the fourth quarter. The RPI is going to have to... Extra point attempt is no good. Somebody got a hand on that one. And it's, in, uh, it's no good on the extra point. So RPI leads 20 to 6 with 10.39 to go. Yeah, that's the first bad series for the defense all night, I think. You know, you know, the college football season this year, games I've watched have brought on so many successful onside kicks. It's, it's getting to be an art. <laughs> well, we'll see what WPI does here. They've got six on the right, four on the left. Favernelli is teeing the ball up. Hill is right up there in the middle. Tavernelli comes up and it's not well. It's a it's a short kick to the 25. It's not onside. An up man for RPI takes it and it'll end up stopping around the 31 yard line. Just a mass of bodies out there. So RPI takes over at their own 31. Not a very good try for an onside. I don't think it was. Then it was a lousy kick then. That's what I think it was. <laughs> I, just, I think it was not a good kick. It sure wasn't. 10.33 to go, fourth quarter. RPI leading by 14. 20 to 6 is the score now. RPI takes over at their own 31. RPI is going to have to work this week. Avery, handoff to Schlatz on first down. He gets two to the 34, 33 actually, and he's pushed back at that point. So WPI with three timeouts, looking to get RPI into a three and out situation here. Yeah, number 35 on the defense, on the tackle for WPI. RPI trying to milk the game clock now. We're going to go under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Avery fakes the handoff. Looks to throw, and that's incomplete. Taken by Lane, but now they'll, they'll blow the whistle. It was along the 30. They're going to rule that it was an incomplete pass, not a lateral. And the play is over with. And I think Avery may have gotten hit right as he let go of the ball. Incomplete on second down. It'll make it third and eight RPI. Yeah, they really got to work on their passing game down the field this week. Because it, it's not impressive tonight. How many years have we been saying the deep passing game for RPI has been lacking? Well, I mean, we've had we've had good years with it, but uh, I mean, Gadar and Hogan most games this year did pretty well, but tonight I don't even know if they're throwing. Third down, RPI is going to run the ball. They won't get a first down. This is stopped at the forty. Nice work there by Schlatz to make his way through to the 40, but he's pushed down and it's fourth and one RPI. I, I don't mean this season. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. There have been the last few years. There have been times when we've talked about the deep passing game wasn't there for some games. Exactly. Franks comes out to punt as RPI has it just short of the 40, and they need to get to the 41 on their side of the field. Franks boots the ball away. Ecker. Takes it up to 17. Ecker towards the sideline. 20. Flag comes out, and I think this is going against WPI. It is. Going against number 27 for WPI. See if I have him on my duty. Yandian. Yeah, Yandian. Mark Yandian. He is on the two deep, folks, as a cornerback. <laughs> this is the first game I ever did without a roster for the other team.
That'll be a minus 10 yards for WPI. So down by two scores, WPI down by 14. They'll start out of their own 12, and there's 9-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Defense has got to get back where they were early in the game. Show what they can do here. Give some pressure on that quarterback. Grills to his right, and that's incomplete. He was looking for a Boynton along the sidelines, but it was underthrown. Yeah, Bus was right there with him. But it was that typical sideline throw that you can't do much about. <laughs> Second and 10 for WPI at their own 12. Rolls, the quarterback in relief, gives to Pierce. Pierce ran left, tried to turn that corner and could not. The pursuit was too good, they caught up to him at the 12 and it's no gain for WPI, it'll be a third and 10. WPI puts three receivers on the right, one on the left. Pierce in the backfield. Very little variation on what WPI's been doing in this second half. It could be because they put Grills in there. They've simplified a lot of the offense. Grills puts the ball up in the air, that's incomplete. The receiver had fallen down around the 23, got back up and then fell down going for the ball. Looks like he may have hurt himself actually. He may have been fell down in the first place. He's over on the sidelines trying to walk something off. And it's three and out for WPI. RPI should have good field position on this, we'll see. Bevernelli will be in his own end zone for the punt. Gidar's around his own 50. Snap, Bevernelli's punt, not his best of the day, but it's, it's gonna be pretty good. It'll bounce at the 45, and it's down there by WPI. RPI gets it on WPI side of the field with 8.23 to go in the game, leading 20 to six. Yeah, that Jason Lamb, he, that's the second one he downed tonight. He's made three or four tackles. He's a pretty good ball player. He's only a sophomore. Offense comes out led by Avery. First and 10 engineers, RPI at their 45. Handoff on first down. It's going to get a good chunk of yardage there as Polis goes to the left, turns up field, and makes it to the 38 for a pickup of seven. I thought Reggie was going to break that one. The offensive line did a nice job on that sweep, as well as uh, some running backs in front of him. Second and three, RPI. I think uh, psychologically it would be big for the offense to get a get a touchdown on this drive. Second down play is Colas again. Helmet comes off. And that's it as he got to the 30 inside the 35 to the 34 just about. Nope, that's Tavinis, sorry. That, yeah, sorry that's not about Colas. That. To Venice on the carry. He right. lost his helmet. He has to come out of the game. But it is a first down for RPI at the 35. Actually, this is the correct call. They gave his forward progress at the 35 because that's where his helmet came off and the play is secondly dead when the ball runner loses his helmet. Venice is starting to get a lot of time, Kurt. Flats is back in there as the running back. First and 10 RPI, 7.20 to go, fourth quarter. Flats takes the carry and he gets three. Say he stopped at the 32, and the clock will continue to run. WPI has all three timeouts left, trailing by 14 here in the third, pardon me, in the second half. It's beyond the third quarter, it's the fourth quarter. Game three, second down and seven. 6.59 to go in the ball game. RPI leads it 20 to six. RPI milking that game, the play clock, pardon me. Up 
Five seconds left. They'll snap the ball. Handoff. This is to the 30, inside the 30, to the 28. That's Polis on the carry. Eric LaRue on the tackle for WPI. Third and three RPI in the WPI 28. 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. RPI in no big rush to snap this ball. Avery takes a snap, fakes the handoff on the option play, keeps it himself, ducks inside, doesn't get the first down. Stopped at the 26. Now bring up fourth down. I say if R you're RPI, you go for it here. I thought he had it. No, no, he was stopped. Oh, I see the spot, yeah. He was, he had to get to the 25 and he never made, he never made the 26. Fourth and short for RPI. Offense stays out there. Five and a half to go, fourth quarter. RPI leading by 14. They punch all together to give us a slash. Slash has got the first down. Makes it to the 24 before he's pushed back. Forward progress gets the first down and RPI maintains possession of the ball. He's the banger. Need a couple of yards, that's the guy to give it to. Chains move, 523 to go. We remind you, you're listening to Rensselaer Football on WRPI 91.5 Troy. Kurt Sutton, Bob Conway on the call. New series of downs for RPI, and that'll be a lot more time off the clock, assuming they keep the ball on the ground. Lane goes into the backfield. He takes the handoff from Avery. This is to his left. Lane stays on his feet. Caught from behind, but it's another first down at the 10-yard line. Nice job by the offensive line. Very good job. Big hole for Lane. But RPI is deep at running backs. They really are. Lane, Drummond, Tavitas, Reggie. First and goal, RPI at the 10. Slots. Drummond. <laughs> so many. Four and a half to go. Davinas on the carry on first down. Gets to the five, to the four on the first down play. You know, that Tavinas is fast too, Kurt. He hit that line really quickly. Second and goal from the four for RPI. Four minutes, a little over four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. RPI leading by 14. Nice to go get one more before the end of the game. Well, a field goal does it just as well. That makes it two touchdowns, makes it a three-score game. Avery has trouble with the snap, and he pulls it down, runs forward, and stops for a loss around the six. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. It was a high snap. Third and goal from the five for RPI. If you don't make it here, you send Franks out, and you make it a 17-point game, and that makes it three scores for WPI, which is nearly impossible. I'm just worried about our lack of production in the red zone, other than field goals. Third and goal from the five. Avery, where'd the ball go? Venus has it, he's in for the touchdown. Takes out a lot of people, takes out me. He gets it in for the TD, and RPI is up 26 to 6. And that's his second touchdown tonight. Look at him. Yeah, he spun off the defenders, and that's why the linebackers didn't see where he was. He's tough. He's a banger. Like I said, freshman, 5'8, 200 pounds with speed. We'll take it. Frank's on to try the extra point. Now spots down, the kick is up, and it is good. 3.07 to go in today's game, and RPI leads 27 to 6. I think, I think the uh, coach will be uh, pretty pleased about 
getting on that board at last time before this game is over. And I'm not even talking about trying to run up a score or nothing. I'm talking about executing in the red zone. It could really cost us later in the year if we can't do that. Ranks out to kick the ball away as WPI trails by 21. But I've seen a lot of good things tonight on the defense. On the offense, I, I, I've seen some good things, but the downfield pass was nothing tonight. The, la the last stats I got, let me just take a look. Third quarter. Five completions for 57 yards through three quarters. That's right. Five for 12. Franks boots the ball away. This one will be returned. It's taken at the one yard line. Five, 10, 15, 20, and to the 21 made it. Did Murphy. And that's where WPI takes over with 3.02 to go in the game. I think that's once again number 27, Brandon Cook. He's always the first guy down the field. Grills in at quarterback again, still has been for the entire second half. As WPI looks to produce something here. Down by 21 with 3.02 to go. Grills takes a snap. Puts the ball up and intercepted by the engineers. Taken away. 45 and tackled right near the 45 was Lanieri on the interception. Nice interception by Lanieri, too. Jumped up in the air. Got it with two hands over his head. Well, you take a look at this defense. They gave up nine to Norwich. 31 to Alford. 13 to Castleton. And so far, six to WPI. That's pretty good. 252 to go. RPI leading by 21. First and 10 at their own 46. This is run the ball time if you're RPI. And on first down, that's what they'll opt to do. They'll get about three. And the revolving running back. 29. Department. That's Adley on the carry yeah, for RPI. That's right. I missed the dirt. <laughs> it was easier to tell the substitutions when you played on a dirt field. Yeah. Muddy field was even better. RPI letting the play clock go down. 2.10 to go in the game. RPI up by 21. And off. Gets across the 50 to the 48. 35 once again. Drummond on the carry for RPI. Brian Murtog once again for WPI on the stop. Third down and four at the 48. One thirty-five to go in the game. RPI about to stay perfect at, in night games here at the East Campus Stadium. Avery keeps it, and Avery's got the first. No, well, maybe not. He might have been a half a yard short. I thought he had to get to the 45, but really, really the 44 Avery had to get to. We're going to move it, I think. No, now they're going to measure. He got a better spot than I thought he should have. If he got the, if that spot's good, which I think it is, it'll be a first down. And if WPI doesn't use their timeouts, that'll be the game. Yep, they'll, they're not going to measure. They're just going to say it's a first down. I only remember one pass tonight. Well, you mentioned Casey McHugh, and it was. Incomplete over here, I thought. He's on the stat board here for one catch for 18 yards. I thought McHugh had a reception. Well. RPI 
in the victory formation. They'll take a knee with 1.10 to go. WPI will not be taking their timeouts, and RPI is going to win today's game 27-6. I like to see if they bring up our stats. RPI will have to snap the ball one more time as they wait for the play clock to go down. Once they get it under 40 seconds, they'll snap the ball. Which they do. WPI will not be stopping the clock, and RPI will be winning today's game. Just 25 seconds until it's officially in the books here, but it's going to be an RPI 27, WPI 6 final score, with RPI regaining control of the transit trophy. Well, the defense showed a lot tonight. The offense didn't play badly, but... Like I said earlier, I'm worried about that throwing the ball downfield. It just uh, didn't happen tonight because they, the receivers were all covered. I can remember at least five or six times where Avery looked down the field, looked one way the other way, back the other way, and finally just ran the ball. Well, you never know how the schedule is going to work out. I think Alfred, prior to today, was the best, probably still, the best team RPI's played so far this season. Yep. RPI put up 31 against them, only 27 against WPI, probably hit the best secondary that RPI sees. And I think Norwich and Castleton State are certainly not as good teams as WPI and, and certainly not as good as Alfred. I think Alfred lost it against today. Anybody's curious about that. So you never know how this season's going to sort out, and of course, down on the Further on down the road, you have Hobart and Springfield who look like the big teams right now in the Liberty League. Further on down the road, with big wins today here, or pardon me, big wins today this weekend in the opening weekend of Liberty League play. Right now they're having the presentation of the trophy down on the field. Yeah, they were really uh, anxious, to, especially the seniors, to get this back. RPI right now has possession of the two trophies they play, well actually three trophies. RPI has, I guess you can call it permanent possession of the shot glass trophy as the series against Coast Guard. Coast Guard has not been played in some years and they were the last ones to win it, so that, that is permanently in RPI's possession, or as permanently as can be unless they start playing Coast Guard again. There they are, they got it right in the middle of the pack, raising that trophy. As RPI celebrates on the field. Time to wrap it up here from the East Campus Stadium as I guess it's a happy night if you're an RPI football fan, not a happy night if you're a WPI football fan. I tell you what, WPI, you said it, they had a good secondary. They defended well. Not only knocking down passes, never got that far. They, they covered yeah, no, themselves. No, that's, that's very true. Avery many times had to keep the ball because he didn't have anybody to throw it exactly. to. Exactly. And I, that's really the, they talk about the interceptions, but really the pass not happening in the first place. Exactly. It's some of the best defense you can play. Absolutely. And that's, that's the best that, you can do. That's why play. I said, that's a problem that's got to be worked on. I'm, it's, not, it's not something Coach I doesn't know, I'm sure. But, uh, I'm, I'm sure they will make adjustments to whatever they were doing tonight because WPI figured out whatever we were doing up till now and shut it down pretty good uh, pass-wise. So as things wrap up here at East Campus Stadium, time to run down the scoring for you in today's game as RPI comes out with a 27 6 victory. It was RPI getting on the board first in the first quarter, 52 seconds left. A 51-yard field goal by Franks made it 3-0 RPI. That was the score after one quarter. RPI made it 6-0 with a 24-yard field goal by Franks with 6-16 left to go in the first half. 
and then they made it 13 nothing. just seven seconds left in the first half. Avery to Colas on a seven yard touchdown pass. Franks' kick, it was 13 nothing RPI at the half. Third quarter, the only score was from RPI to finish with a five yard run and Franks' kick made it 20 to nothing RPI. That was the score after three quarters. In the fourth quarter, WPI closed it to one score. Grillo to Igo on a four yard touchdown pass with 10.39 to go in the game. The kick was blocked, so it was RPI 20 and WPI yes! six at that point. RPI and then move. RPI was the last season. score of the game, 3.07 to go. To finish with another five yard run. Both of his TDs today were five yard runs. Franks' kick made it 27 to six in RPI's favor. That's the way it would finish. And RPI regains possession of the transit trophy. RPI improves to three and one on the season. They're one and oh in the conference. They are tied for first place with Hobart, Springfield, and St. Lawrence. WPI falls to one and three overall. They are 0 and one in the conference in fifth place, a tie with Merchant Marine, Rochester, and Union. WPI has the unenviable task of playing Hobart next week. That'll be at home in Worcester. And RPI goes on the road next week. They will be playing at Merchant Marine for their second game in the Liberty League. Your performance of the game, Bob. Yes, on offense, um, I'm going to go with uh, Mike Tivins. Uh, number of carries was 12. Gained 61 yards. Two TDs. Along a 12, an average of 5.1. I like him for two weeks in a row. Uh, Jeff Avery, the passing game wasn't there tonight, but uh, running, he was 17 carries for 66 yards. Uh, then he had uh, uh, 11 in losses, so he gained 55 yards, a 3.2 carry, and you know, Reggie Colas, the, oh, many of them did well, but I. Tivens would be the guy that I would be my number one guy on offense. And on defense, um, I like uh, Brandon Cook. And I uh, I think Ryan Buss played a very good game as well. Uh, on special teams, there's no question about that. Andrew Franks, once again, punting. He had five punts for 225 yards, an average of... 45 yards. Uh, he kicked two field goals, one of 51, one of 24, and he went two, two or three PATs. Two? Three. Three. So once again, nine more points he puts up on the board out of 27, and one, three of them from 51 yards out. So once again, Offense, Mike Tavinis. Uh, I'm going to put Avery with him for the, in, in general. And then uh, receiving. Uh, I think nobody w was outstanding tonight with receptions because we didn't throw that well. So I would say uh, just Tavinis on offense, uh, Cook and Buss. On defense, each of them had five tackles and did a lot of other things. And uh, Andrew Franks on special teams for a typical but spectacular Franks night. That's it. So that's going to do it for us here from the East Campus Stadium. Our next sports broadcast is actually Friday night, I believe, from North Dakota as the women's hockey team. They picked up a 2 nothing win in an exhibition yesterday. They start out their regular season Friday night in North Dakota. So that'll be our next sports broadcast. And then our next football broadcast will be next Saturday as RPI goes down to Great Neck, New York to play the Merchant Marine Mariners, that's a 1 p.m. start. That's next Saturday afternoon, RPI in football. So the next football broadcast next Saturday at 1. Next sports broadcast Friday night. It's around 8 o'clock, I believe, RPI versus North Dakota in women's hockey. I'd like to thank Warren back at the station for getting us out on the air. Also, our tech staff, we had three guys back at the station helping us out tonight. Thank you very much back there for making sure we got this game out over the airwaves to you. For Bob Conway, my name is Kurt Sutt. We'd like to thank you for listening to tonight's game here from Troy, New York. The final score in the 2014 edition of the Transit Trophy game, it was RPI 27 and WPI 6.
and you've been listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy.